Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next video. But Nigerians are already suffering. Increase in food stuff. Transportation cost is already very high. Cost of living, cost of housing, things are generally very expensive. So why an increase in the cost of uh, foil at this point in time? The timing is wrong. Nigerians can't bear it. Certainly they can't bear it. So I think the yoke is getting too much for Nigerians. I think uh, if the if government will do that, it, it ought not to be now. If they have a way of subsidizing, of subsidizing it, they should still continue. So that's my take on it. If they are not inviting trouble, if they want to invite trouble, they should continue and remove this fair subsidy. Because I want the government of the day to have focus and have a, what is called um, forecasting. What is going to happen if I do this thing? But they don't have it. That is why they are suffering today. Today, this thing will happen here. Other will happen this year. They don't have IQ. If they remove a square subsidy, it will keep keep the economy the more. And uh, already we are we are in a galloping inflation. If they do this thing now, it will further degenerate. Um, Social problem. What I mean by social problem? We encounter more uh, social vices like robbery, kidnapping, bandit, and so on and so forth. Because the team in uh, youth, if you don't have, if you don't have a plan for youth, it will it will cause problem. So it is better they should forget about. Fuest uh, subsidy. If they want Nigeria to to prosper, if they don't want, they are not. If they are not inviting trouble, if they want to invite trouble, they should continue and remove this fuest subsidy. Like Venezuela and other uh, foresighted and uh, people, uh, government that have vision, what they did is that they produce crude oil, but they don't uh, export the crude oil. What they export is the refined product. But in this case, we see our refineries are in Kamatos. There's no refinery in Nigeria that is functioning. As a result of that, the common man is, is called to bear the burden of buying uh, uh, petroleum products at the cost of the international market, which shouldn't be. So that it, it is the problem of the lack of action of our government to be proactive, to react to issues and make sure that Nigeria being an oil producing nation should be able to have a, a form of uh, buffet or a form of uh, thing that cushions the effect of any increase or decrease of the of crude oil prices in the international market. But the thing is, is that even when the, uh, you have increase in crude oil price in, in uh, petroleum, uh, petroleum product, as a result of the increasing uh, uh, cost of crude oil, the thing is that when the price comes down. The common man, there will not be, there's nothing like elasticity or flexibility to adjust to come down to the current price of the of, of the of the of crude oil in the international market. At the end, like every other thing that happens in Nigeria, once the price goes up, it will keep on skyrocketing. Uh, first subsidy remover is an issue that uh, people like us have supported for so long, even right under uh, the administration of uh, Good Luck Jonathan when uh, the administration decided to remove first subsidy. Though the people currently in power opposed it, but people like us supported it because we know that 
it is impossible for us to go on forever with fuel subsidy. It is quite impossible. Uh, it is my uh, candid opinion that we shouldn't subsidize consumption, but we should rather subsidize production so that when you subsidize production, at the end of the day, it will affect the uh, price to the end user of all products. Uh, the government have been trying to say when they came in from 87 to one something and so on. We thought that subsidy was removed then, but they said no, it was not. Well, I agree with them. But my point is, it is not something that government should completely remove its hand from petroleum product pricing. PPPRA should be obsolete, should be scrapped. Anything that has to do with government regulating the price of any petroleum product should be completely removed. Say, oh, but you are a common man, you are talking like this. Will it not affect you? Yes, it will. You know, I asked the price of Kule Kule recently, just one Kule Kule, like the size of my finger. And I was told it is 20 naira. I said, wow, when we were growing up in the 70s, that 20 naira will buy 4,000 Kule Kule. So it will, it will be very, uh, to us, it will seem as, oh, yeah, well, what I, the point I'm making from that is, we were in this country when a little of oil was being sold, maybe for three kobo, five kobo. Now we are talking about 160 something. That was my first salary in life in 89. So, but let them remove this thing once and for all. Without the refinery working is, is a disaster to the economy because it will affect the masses. Not just the masses alone, it will affect everything pertaining the economy. In a, in a country where we in a country like Nigeria, which is a third world country, still coming up country, we don't deserve, we, we still need this fuel subsidy, at least to keep things going temporarily, pending when the refinery starts working. So I don't think removing of that fuel subsidy at the moment now have any positive impact on the masses and on, on, the, on, the, on the people at large. Because over the years, we've been hearing of fuel subsidy. We've been hearing of uh, the, the, previous, the current government before now said uh, the previous administration was using it as a, a means of um, embezzlement. But I, I don't see that. They came in promising Nigerians that they will remove it and use it to develop the country. So far, so good. I think they've removed, they've removed some part of the subsidy. But still, we have not seen any effect on, it, on that. And um, to me, I would say fuel subsidy is a scam. I believe that um, it will bring about inflation. It will also bring about the cost of uh, transportation, which um, uh, normally would take the prices of goods and services higher than it is. But um, from what I gathered, the Minister of Information, I think I said yesterday, said um, there will be a town hall meeting in respect of this very issue. And um, I believe it is only when that happens, people will, you know, have their own opinion or say as it were. But I think if you ask me, I want us to wait until government formally say, I mean, it's been done. But for now, I want to believe it's still speculation. Okay, so, so also on the security, what do you say about the security in this country? Um, one of the things I understand about our security challenges or challenge is the fact that uh, every Nigerian is... Um, really perturb about the issue but i also realize that what we are doing more is allowing our emotions run over the practical issues as they were i'll give a simple example i think yesterday the governor of um, niger state made or rather gave um made a statement somewhere i can't remember but i think i heard that on radio and what he was saying is that the landmass of the states where the bandits or uh, terrorists operate more is basically those ungoverned spaces. I'll give a simple example. Borno State and um, Niger State are two states in Nigeria that if you look at their land mass, it's um, obviously more than the five eastern states, so to speak. And um, when these guys, you know, come to operate or strike, once they are being chased, they get into, you know, this ungoverned space, which, is, which are the bushes, 
which also have um, uh, borders with neighboring states like Kaduna, Zamfara, um, Niger, I mean um, FCT and others. So it's not as if government, if you ask me, is not willing to work for the people, but government is overwhelmed. I've said this over and over again, but my friends will say, hey, forget about those things, that this government is not ready to work. And Nigeria has to step up. The Nigeria security agencies, they need to step up in the security situation. I believe it's something that can be done because these people are those who are carrying this uh, mayhem in our society, banditry. There are people among us. So why can't we be able to track them down and make sure they are duly punished so that such will never reoccur again in the history of our nation? So I think the security agencies should step up without compromise. On the economy, the economy is so poor, it's so poor, even the, the, the deaf hears it, the blind can feel 